Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and this is my Lego Slave 1 because I love all things Boba Fett. And I must confess that I did not put this together. My kids did because I suck. I suck at Lego. But that's all right because if you suck at Lego and you're good at Moto, we've now got Lego and Moto. There's a rhyme in there somewhere. So let's take a look at how we do this. It's pretty easy. There's a little setup involved. And uh, yeah, let's go. Here's a VW bug model that I loaded up into Moto using the loader and rendered an octane. What's great is all these materials come in. All the colors are correct. You get all these little decals on there. Those come in as well. There was just a very, very small amount of work I did on this before I rendered it. And it looks great. The plugin really does all the work for you. Here's Darth Maul versus Qui-Gon Jinn in a bubbling cauldron of molten cheese. My money is on Darth Maul. Um, you can do fun stuff like this where, you know, traveling through the dead marshes. Frodo didn't realize there were alligators in the dead marshes. And uh, yeah, Sam looks pretty horrified. Golem seems pretty psyched. Frodo mostly just looks surprised that he got his head bit off by an alligator. And yeah, so lots of fun stuff like this. You can kind of kit bash this stuff together. So how do we get started? Well, we get started in a web browser. I'll post all these links in both the YouTube description and at pixelfondue.com in the blog post there. This is Eric Solvay's personal site. Eric is a, well, he's the author of this particular Lego loader, but he's also been developing for Moto for, I don't know, probably 10 years. He's responsible for all the dynamics in Moto and PMODs and all kinds of other stuff. And he's giving this away, which is great. And so you go here to battlefleet.net and you've got the Lego loader and you click download. And where that's gonna take you is Gumroad. Now Gumroad allows you to just, you know, essentially name a fair price for the plugin. So, you know, I, I actually would suggest maybe putting in a few bucks for this since he gave this away. If you have a lot of fun with this, think of it this way. Would you buy Eric a coffee for his work on this plugin? I would say yes. So whatever that is in your area, Starbucks Grande with room for cream, probably a couple bucks, maybe throw that in there. I think that'd be great. Or would I buy Eric a beer? I'd buy Eric a beer. I'd say, thanks for the Lego loader. I've had a lot of fun with that. I owe you a beer. And if you live in Silicon Valley like me, you know, a beer is like $75 a pint. So you just put in $75 and you're good to go. So put in your money and then you could download it or you could put in zero. That's fine too. I'm sure he's not going to be upset about that, but I would suggest putting in some money and then um, you'll get a file. So let's go back to Moto. Here's the file that you're going to download. FMT LD draw underscore zero three B LPK, right? Not the probably easiest uh, name in the world to remember. Um, what that is, is LD draw is the Lego CAD program, so to speak. And this is the format loader and it's version 0.03B. Okay, so Eric is still, I think, working on this and it's perfectly fine right now, but it's nice to see that he may continue to add features to the Lego loader. What you wanna do is just drag that into your open version of Moto and here I already have it in there, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit cancel. But normally what you do is you install it, then you'd restart Moto, to restart automatically basically. And then um, you'd have it installed. And it'll show up right here under system, kits, and there it is, uh, format LDR. So again, funny name, it doesn't say Lego in there, and you're probably gonna figure out what this is, but that's what that is. That's the LD Draw loader. Now we're not quite done. We need to do a couple more things. We need to install LD Draw because it's going to install all the little data files, all the little brick parts that the loader then uses to bring, you know, put together in the right places for these models. A Lego model file is essentially just a schematic for all these parts, right? It's just uh, the instructions essentially for how to put all these little data parts together. So we've got to get the data parts and we have to point Moto towards them. So again, going back to our browser, if you follow the links to uh, on Battlefleet, you'll come here and you can download the Windows program and just you know install LD Draw. I suggest you do that. It'll install all the parts as well as the CAD program. Um, if you just want to do parts only, you can do that too, but I suggest just doing the whole thing. If you go over here to downloads, uh, get started, you can get go through the Mac OS or the Linux one as well, and it'll work with, uh, I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure it will with Linux, but it, it probably will <laughs> at least. Uh, definitely will with Mac, so you can do that as well. So once you get LD Draw installed, let me just head over to LD Draw. So this is the LD Draw CAD program. You don't need this. I just loaded it up to show you guys what it looks like. You can actually load up models in here, say open and grab like the Fire Brigade sample model. 
And it even has, you know, Maya style alt click navigate, which is cool. So that's a program that comes with it, but it's essentially loading things the same way that Moto will, where it loads in the plan for the Lego model, which is just putting all these little bricks in the right place. So that's LD draw. Don't need it, but we do need those little data files. So let me jump back over to Moto. So here we are in Moto, and I'm going to go to system and preferences. And under file IO, you'll see something for LD draw, LD draw IO. And here you have some uh, directories that we need to point Moto towards. So here is where people run into troubles. If they if they don't point it towards the right directory, then uh, Moto is unable to find the little with the little brick files, little DAT files, and it just kind of loads up a blank scene. And you need this trailing slash. On a PC, that's a backslash. On a Mac, it's a forward slash. You need that or it will not work. So if I go over here to explore, so here I am in explore and I'm in my LD draw root directory in my uh, documents folder. So LD draw should install a bunch of parts in your documents folder. You may have to hunt around depending on where you have it installed, but what you wanna do is make sure it has, you've got the root directory here and you have all these subdirectories, right? And you can see how this kind of matches up. We got a P, we got a parts, we got models, and there we go, P, parts, models. And you can right click in Windows Explorer, or you can uh, copy, you can say copy address as text. And you can also on OS 10, you can copy that um, directory address. You wanna go over here, and of course I already have it, but if I, let's say it's blank and I just paste it, you think that's done, but it's not. Remember, you need the trailing backslash on PC or forward slash on Mac. Otherwise it will not work, but that's how you could do it. And the subdirectory should be fine and you should be good to go. If you look at these directories in Explorer or Finder, you'll see like this parts directory. It has all these little DAT files, right? Those are our bricks. Those are the bricks and those are the bricks, okay? So that's what we're looking for. So the Moto has to find these guys in order to make the models work. And it has a bunch of like um, sample models. If you go to models, there's just tons of sample models that installed, at least with my installation. There's Star Wars stuff. There's just all kinds of cool stuff, right? And you can also download models from a bunch of different pages. Here's one. And again, I'll put this link in the uh, description in YouTube and on the Pixel Fondue page, but you can like set a theme like uh, elves and you know, whatever, and do a search for it and it'll filter it out. And you've got elves, if you're into elves. And I know some of you guys are into elves. I know it. Okay, so here we are back in Moto. Everything's installed. We got LD, we got the plugin installed. We have LD draw installed and we're pointing Moto to all the right directories. So I can just go to file and these Lego files, and there's a number of different ones. There's these MPD, but there's also other uh, extensions on there. Um, so keep in mind, it'll work with several different extensions. MPD is the one I seem to find the most of. And you just grab a model. So let's grab the Rebel Snow Speeder, because those are cool. Let's grab that guy. So it may take a little bit to load up, a little bit of time there, because there's actually a lot of uh, data in, in these files. But once it comes in, this is the advanced viewport, it just looks great, right? It's got all the right colors on there. The glass is already transparent. You have uh, little decal files that should be in the right place. And we're good to go with this Rebel Snowspeeder. I mean, even the basic material settings that Eric put in there with the plug-in are really good. So he's got a basic plastic material on there, a little bit of roughness, 13%. You may wanna you know, move that up or down depending on your own preference um, but this you know the specular amount the fresnel amount should be correct for plastic we got white highlights which is correct for plastic and uh, diffuse amount yeah you know you may want to pop that up a little bit depending and he did put a rounded edge width on there as well i believe these are real world scale so 0.2 millimeters for the rounded edge width that really adds uh, to the realism there one thing you want to take a look at and you know the meshes we've got instances and we've got meshes we're not using replicas he's not using replicas here and every brick does not come in as its own mesh. You'll see they're kind of brought in as chunks. Let me go to, to a perspective view. So a lot of these things just kind of come in as chunks. So we have this uh, chunk here, right? And that's really going to help improve performance. So you know he talked about maybe, I know Eric mentioned, maybe having a version which will load up each individual brick. And that's possible as well. But you know, you're looking at a performance hit there. And most people don't need that. If you're going to blow these things up with dynamics, you can certainly you know give that a shot. Um, but I think it, going with these sort of large chunks is, is a good idea. Uh, speaking of dynamics, we can take a look at that real quick. Let me load up another model, and I think we'll be about done. All right, so here's an alligator model. The very same alligator used to bite off Frodo's head. Oh, Frodo, if only you knew they were ambush predators.
you probably would have made it. Anyway, uh, so let's do a little dynamic simulation on this guy real quick. F2 to bring up my model tab, and I'm going to shift and hit the plane to make a plane. And then I'm going to pick up my model here. In fact, there's a bit of a hierarchy there, which I don't think we need. So I'm just going to unhierarchy the hierarchy, grab all these little pieces, move them up. And then I'm going to kind of turn them to the side a little bit just so we get a better uh, landing. Whoops, let's do Alt A for automatic action center, get all those guys moving together. One thing you want to make sure you do with uh, dynamics is make sure the centers are in the right place. So I'm going to go edit center to bounding box center and it's going to make sure to put all those centers in the right place in fact if i hit o for uh, visibility options i can make sure those centers are actually visible visible we want to show centers all and you see those little um axes in there those are the centers right so you want to make sure those are actually in the center of the bounding box and then let's do some dynamics so i've got all these guys selected and oh let's you know if i'm going to do dynamics i suppose i should go to the setup tab um, anyway, so let's do compound rigid body. So why would we do compound rigid body instead of active rigid body? Well, if I do compound rigid body, and I say I drag this main mesh here into the workspace, and I see that's yellow, so something's connected, and I see that those are the dynamics, right? The dynamic properties, this dynamics package is now connected there. In fact, this is going to be feeding into the solver. And what's cool about compound rigid body is I just have one dynamics setting for all meshes. So if I click this guy here, I can see that all the meshes in the scene are that I had selected are going to be hooked up to um, this dynamics here. So we've got the upper jaw here and all these other you know pieces are feeding into it and picking up the dynamic properties of just, just this one piece. So it's an easy way of, of you know, using the um, compound rigid body of adjusting dynamics for all these pieces at once. So there's only like four pieces of this alligator, but you know, you might have a thousand pieces of the Millennium Falcon if you're going crazy. So maybe Bump up the bounce a little bit and you know whatever let's uh select the plane here and make sure that's a static rigid body so it collides with it and then i can you know hit um play here and everything just kind of stuck together that's kind of sucky let's turn down friction five percent oops let's turn down friction on this guy and hit uh, go again and boom falls apart so the friction obviously it's a lego right so the friction was keeping it stuck together in that first version so here it's it's falling apart nicely i can hit the simulation here and, and simulate the entire thing so i can you know scrub through it then you can bake these guys down if you want and yeah frodo's revenge alligator gets smashed to pieces by the power of the one ring anyway one other little note here i would like to make is the models aren't necessarily all welded together. So if I go into polygon mode here and I click on this brick right here, it all, you know, I double click on it and it selects connected and it looks like one solid brick. But if I go to one of these nubs here and double click, you'll notice I'm not getting the entire nub. I'm just getting this little piece here. And if I actually pull it off, you'll see that it's not welded on there, right? So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, everything looks fine when you render it, all the normals are in the right place. But if you're doing certain animations or deformations, you may want to weld those things together uh, so you don't get any tearing on these parts. Okay, I think that's it. So have fun with the Lego loader. We'll get back to this again on Pixel Fondue. We'll do a little Lego battle contest, kind of like my Frodo versus the alligator con uh, image. And we'll have a prize for that. So thanks a lot and Lego away. Yum yum.